Proper insulation can save you money and make your home feel warmer than my personality. <sighs> so warm. If only there was a way to see issues with your home insulation, like some sort of thermal camera that could show drastic variations in temperatures and help you save money on your home energy bill. I'm Travis and this is how I do things and today I'm going to show you how to improve your home insulation with thermal imaging. This is the Foxwell RT100 infrared camera and I put a link to it in the video description. It can detect the surface temperature of anything in its view and display the variances with this image. By default, it also displays the coolest and hottest surfaces in its view, as well as the temperature at the center of the image. You can change the display preferences, but right now I have it set to show cool things as a dark purplish color and hot things as a bright yellow color. To get started, all I had to do was charge it up, download the app, and plug it in. It automatically opens the app and starts to show video. I put a complete list of this camera's features in the video description if you want to check them out on your own time. The rest of us have money to save, so let's start looking for insulation issues. There are many things that could go wrong with your insulation. It's possible you never had enough insulation to begin with. Back in the day, gas heat was crazy cheap, so efficiency wasn't really a priority. They'd rather save the money on little to no insulation. In older homes, you might even see windows with single pane glass. Age could be a factor. Sometimes attic insulation can get compacted, which affects the R value. If you have fiberglass insulation and it's not properly attached, it can fall down inside of walls, causing the top of the wall not to be properly insulated. Fiberglass insulation can also be degraded when pests chew or gnaw on it. Gross. If you've ever had any roof siding or plumbing issues, your insulation could have water damage, especially if you have fiberglass insulation. Now that you know some of the issues you could have with your insulation, let's look around my five-year-old home to see if there's any areas for improvement. In each area of my home, I'm going to start with a baseline by checking the temperature of an interior wall. If I find anything significantly different than that, it might be worth looking into. It's best to do this testing when the outside temperature is far different than your thermostat temperature. Any issues will be much easier to see that way. The first thing I'll check is all of the exterior walls. The temperature outside is currently 55 degrees. It's morning so the sun is beating on one side of the house and coming in through the windows. This is changing the air temperature in the rooms on that side of the house. This is why each room's walls are different temperatures. So I took a new baseline each time I change rooms. Overall, the baseline interior wall and exterior walls were only a few degrees different. This camera is so sensitive that I can see the framing and the walls, which is insane. I don't think that that indicates that there's any major issues with the insulation though. I think what I'm seeing is just different materials warming up at different rates. If you do find any discrepancies that are big enough to address, the best solution is to hire a company that can inject foam insulation into the walls. They do this by drilling a one inch hole near the top of the cavity and then spraying in non-expanding foam. This type of foam insulation can go right over any existing insulation you might have in your walls. Next, I'll take a look at the ceiling that's shared with the attic. I did find a spot over the cabinets that was visibly warmer than the rest of the ceiling. I may have moved some insulation away from this spot while working up there at some point. I'll check that out when I go up into the attic. I also noticed that the area near the edges of the house was a little warmer. It can be hard to get enough insulation all the way to the edges of the roof, so that could be the issue there. Even though I hate going in the attic, I'm going to head up there next to see if I can find any other issues. Man, the things I do for you guys. <laughs> the very first thing I noticed up here is that the attic door itself could use some insulation. I may take a piece of 2 inch foam board and glue it to the back of the door. In addition to insulation, attic ventilation is also important because it removes excess moisture and lowers the attic temperatures. The ventilation reduces energy costs, improves the life of your roof, and minimizes ice damming on the roof edges. Attics get airflow from soffit vents as well as roof vents. It's important that the insulation doesn't go all the way to the edge over the soffit. To maintain the airflow, attic rafter baffles should be installed to prevent the insulation from blocking the airflow of the soffit. If you find any obvious areas that could use improvement, the best way to address this is to blow in some loose fill insulation in the attic. If there's just a localized spot, you could take some from another area to even it out. 
You can get this type of insulation at your local big box store and they usually have a machine you can rent to blow it in. I've done this in my garage and it's easy as long as you have a second person to feed the insulation into the machine while you're blowing it in. Depending on where you live, you should have between 10 and 14 inches of insulation in your attic. This area is a little low. I may end up blowing more in soon. When I was up in the attic, I didn't really see anything unusual with the insulation that could have caused that hot spot. It could be maybe an electrical junction box or something. Uh, it's hard to say. To improve attic ventilation, make sure your soffits are allowing airflow with rafter baffles and make sure your roof has some sort of venting. Now let's turn our attention to the exterior doors and windows. In this case, the baseline will be the wall next to the door or window. I'll go around each window and door to see if there are any major differences at the door seals or the insulation behind the door casing. Next, I'll measure the difference of the door or window itself to see if there are any major deficiencies in their insulating ability. Keep in mind, I would never expect a window or door to be as efficient as a properly insulated wall. With the current window technology, the best you can do is to get a window with multiple panes of glass with some sort of inert gas in between them. As far as doors go, the best insulating would be a fiberglass or steel door with insulation. Any windows in a door do affect the door's insulating properties, but they look nice. So. If you have good quality windows and doors, then just check around the perimeter for any sign of insulation issues or gaps. When inspecting my doors and windows, I did find that there were some cool spots where they slide and close. This could be an opportunity for improved weather stripping. I'll check this again in the winter for sure. If you notice any issues with your window seals, first start by making sure the windows are locked to hold them closed. If that's not enough, you could also add some weather stripping to get sealed up nice and tight. If you have older windows with glazing around the panes of glass, you may see some benefits by reglazing them. Window treatments like blinds and curtains can also improve the insulating properties of your windows. A storm door can help improve the insulating performance of your current door by adding an extra layer between the door and the elements. If you're still seeing variations around your windows and doors, it's possible that there's no insulation around them. To fix this, you're going to have to remove the door casing and then insulate this little area in between the window or door and the framing. You can use either fiberglass insulation or expanding foam. Outlets and light switches have electrical boxes that are empty cavities in the wall. Outlets or light switches on exterior walls can be a weak spot in your insulation. My outlets, however, are almost invisible on the thermal camera, and here's why. First off, the spray foam that's in my walls does a great job getting in all the nooks and crannies, including behind the outlet box. Secondly, my builder used these thin gaskets under all the outlet and switch covers to help seal them up tight. You should definitely check all of your outlets and light switches on all of your exterior walls. If they don't have these little sealers behind the plates, I highly recommend adding them. I've moved down to the basement to show you another area to look out for. This area up here is called the rim joist. Depending on your home, there may or may not already be insulation in that area. My rim joist cavities already have spray foam insulation, but I'm going to check them with the thermal camera to see if there's enough insulation. As I'm checking all of these cavities, most of them appear to be well insulated. But I do have a few that seem to be a touch low on insulation. There's a pretty significant temperature difference right here. I thought I had an issue, but then I realized that just above me here is my sliding patio door and it's all glass. The sun is shining through the glass and it's actually warming up the floor directly above me. If you already have spray foam insulation like I do, but it's thin in some spots, you can buy a can of expanding foam to top off those areas. If you don't have any insulation in this area, you really should, and you can do that in three different ways. You can call a company and have a spray foam like mine is here, or you can buy some foam board insulation and cut it to the right size and fit it into that cavity, and then take a can of expanding foam and go around the perimeter, or you can cut a piece of face fiberglass insulation to that size and fit it in that space. Finally, I'll check around anything that's going through the side of my home. HVAC, plumbing, electrical, you name it. If you find any gaps around anything going through the side of your home, buy a can of expanding foam and fill the gap on the inside first. Then after that, go to the outside of the house and caulk the gap. Out here, everything seems to be sealed up pretty tight, but I'll check this area again when I see more extreme temperatures outside. 
The vents, plumbing, and electrical might be shown hot or cold on the thermal camera depending on what they are used for. So I'll try to focus on the areas around them. Well, I am all done and it was a lot of work. And as you can see, I am sweating. I hope I was able to show you guys the benefits of using a thermal camera around your home. If you'd like to buy this one right here, I put a link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed my video, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. And then while you're at it, watch one of these other awesome videos up here and we'll see you guys in the next one. If that's not enough, you could also add some weather stripping to get it sealed up nice and tight.